You have a what, sorry? Mm. <laughs> Why? Wow. Okay, that was a busy day. Okay, Nock is here. Welcome, Nock. Hello, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. How was your day today? I guess you just woke up, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember you told us that it's 7 a.m., right, when you joined this class. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma oh. oh, gosh. Wow. Okay. And Goy, how was your day today? Are you here? Yes. Is that the most productive way to get your work done? To study English and also work at the same time? Is it possible? <laughs> it's possible. It's, it's possible. Okay. okay. <laughs> Yeah, there are many people who can multitask. Is there anyone who can monotask? Is there anyone who does monk mode? Do you remember this word? <laughs> you want, please go ahead. Very true, you're all very skilled. Mm. All right, um, okay, let's get started. I thought that, well, today we can't continue talking about legends forever, but maybe we can look at one more legend before we stop. What do you think? Uh-huh. Britannica, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Can you share with everyone? News in levels dot com. Okay, let me share my screen and then um, we can have a look at it all together. Thank you for giving us this resource. Let's have a look. Good evening. How are you, Danny? Ah, 
How did you find the lesson this morning? Yeah. Okay. Good evening. Pim Dow says good evening on Facebook. Good evening. Artit says good evening. Oh, this is pretty cool. Goy. Did you fall asleep in the class? <laughs> I mean, we thought you were busy. <laughs> But maybe we can take it as a compliment, right? That our stories were so nice and so relaxing that actually Goy fell asleep. Let's have a look at this website. Oh. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, so we have here, we have the three different levels. So we can look. This is level one, right? Quite easy. Emma is a little girl. She lives in Texas, USA. Um, I can type it into the Facebook chat. Hang on. Use in levels.com. There we go. Use in levels.com. Uh, one second. Okay, so we can look at the difference in just the first sentence. Right, in each one, in level one, we just have Emma is a little girl. Level two, in Texas, USA, a girl named Emma has a prosthetic leg. Level three, oh, who wants to read this sentence? Yes, I can. Please. Mm. Right, so you can see, thank you, Goy. To go to hard work means to put in a lot of effort, right? To go to hard work to do something means to put in a lot of effort to do something. Nice, I think this is a great resource. Thank you very much for sharing. Thank you. And yesterday, um, actually, I phoned... Um, here we go. Yesterday, I actually phoned one of my friends and I told them some of the stories which you told me yesterday, which everybody told me yesterday. And they were very interested to hear. <laughs> okay, so today I thought maybe let's move just for the first hour. Let's move to Ireland. Let's move to Ireland. What do you guys know about Ireland? Or what do you think of when you think of Ireland? I think it's quite cold, but I'm not 
Mm -hmm. It's quite cold. I mean, it's certainly colder than Thailand. <laughs> I think it's about the same as the UK. So it's not, it's not too cold, but it's a lot colder than Ireland. Sorry, than Thailand. Okay, let me... A lava moss field? I think you are thinking of Iceland. <laughs> yeah, Ireland. Okay, first of all, let's try these different pronunciations. Okay, we have three words. <laughs> uh, let me make this bigger. Okay. Okay, how do we pronounce this word? Everyone, island. Hmm? Yeah, listen carefully to both vowels. Island. It's not land, it's lund. Lund. Good, island. For example, I live on an island. Or... The UK is an island. Okay. Good. Yeah, an island. Wirini says they speak Gaelic on Facebook. They speak Gaelic. We'll talk about this in a second. So I will write this just down here. They speak Gaelic and Ireland is very cold. Okay. What about this word? Good, Iceland, Iceland. And again, it's Lund, Lund. Yeah, Iceland. Where is Iceland located? Can you describe it in English? Where is Iceland located? Yeah, it's close to the North Pole. It's very far north. And it's in the Atlantic Ocean between Europe and Greenland, right? It's in between Europe and Greenland. So Iceland. Oh, I love Iceland. You know, it's my dream to go to Iceland. It's one of the most beautiful countries, I think, in the world. Yeah, but it's also one of the most expensive countries in the world. So I can't afford to go. <laughs> but look at this church. Imagine every Sunday you go to this church. Oh, this church. Wow. So Iceland is in the Atlantic Ocean. We can see here, right? This is Iceland. So it's significantly further north than the UK, and it's on the same, like the same distance far north as Russia and Canada and Alaska also. Okay, what about this one? This one. Then how is it different to this one? <laughs> Good. So there are actually three syllables in this word. Ireland. 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 It's like I a lund. Ireland. And in America, Ireland. Ireland, something like this. Ire. Yeah, in America, actually, and also in Ireland, funnily enough, they will say er, they will say Ireland, Ireland, Ireland. They talk like that. Ireland, Ireland. Yeah, they have a very um a very like interesting accent, right? In Ireland. So I can add this here. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so they have a very interesting accent. What else? 
What else do you know about this country? Um, actually, this is a very this is a very um, easy question to answer, even though it's a bit confusing. It's because of historical reasons. It's because actually Iceland used to be full of ice, and Greenland was still. I mean, Iceland is still full of ice. If you look at the glacier, like on Iceland, you have these glaciers, right? So Iceland actually. The, mid the middle of the country is just these glaciers. You can't travel there. So in Iceland, people only live on the coast. You can't live in the middle. So there is a lot of ice in Iceland. Um, but Greenland is called Greenland because the people that, um, like, you know the Vikings? They are a group of people from Denmark that used to sail everywhere. Um, I don't know, maybe you have seen like these type of people, right? <laughs> yeah, so they actually, they sailed to Greenland um, and there were people in Greenland that were already living there. But again, the same as the, the story all around the world, the people from Denmark sailed to Greenland and they wanted to um, convince people in Denmark that Greenland was a really nice place to live. They wanted to make everyone think that Greenland is a nice place to live so that more people will come there. And so they called it Greenland. They called it Greenland, but actually, um, sorry, someone just messaged, but actually Greenland is full of glaciers. It's completely full of glaciers, much more than Iceland. Okay, someone, says, no worries that you can't join the camera, but I hope you can listen. Yeah, I won't ask, I won't ask you to answer anything, but I hope you can listen. Okay. Okay, let's go back. Thank you for your question, Goy. So what else? They speak, we can call this Irish. Yeah, we, we can call this Irish. So in Scotland, they speak Gaelic. In Scotland, they speak Gaelic. Earth entered the waiting room. Ooh, we have somebody called Earth who is joining us today. Someone says, Wirini says Irish beer is famous. Yeah, Guinness, right? Guinness is very famous. Hello, Earth, nice to see you. Mm. Ireland. Ireland. Yeah, Halloween was invented in Ireland. Nock, do you know what the story of Halloween was? Because it's very different to how Halloween is now, right? It's totally different. Did Phil tell you about this? <laughs> that makes sense. So actually Halloween does come from an Irish festival. The Irish festival is called Soin. Soin. It looks like it should be pronounced Samhain, but Ireland has its own language, right? So it's pronounced differently. It's called Soin. Um, and Soin is very different from Halloween. Um, so Soin, this festival originally was celebrating um, the beginning of the new year because actually in ancient Ireland, they thought that the new year began like in October, on October the 31st. They thought it's the new year. So the new year was not in um, 
January, right? The new year isn't in October. And so they would do quite a lot of interesting things to welcome the new year and to scare away any evil spirits that maybe would want to hurt them. So they would dance around a fire, for example. Um, they did lots and lots of stuff, um, but it's totally different from Halloween. You can see all of these pictures. Actually, these pictures are kind of like Halloween. Um, this is not similar to how it is really celebrated. But yes, Halloween comes from Ireland. What else? Someone says, what is a pint? Yeah. Trick or treat. Do you mean what does it mean or where does it come from? Mm. Mm. So, again, yeah, we, we have the Halloween, but really it's Halloween is kind of like an American celebration. So when I was young, for example, we didn't celebrate Halloween, but now more and more people are celebrating Halloween. So actually, it kind of came from Ireland. Then when Irish immigrants moved to America, they made something new with this festival. Like they made their own festival in America. And then now it has gone from America and spread across the whole world. So it's kind of come back to Ireland again, like a second time. <laughs> and it's very different now. It's very different. Like Halloween um, in Ireland, Soin, was originally quite a, do you know the word? Somber. Somber. Somber, oh, here we go, like this. We can also write it like that. Somber means um, it's serious. It's not fun. So, yeah, they take it. Originally, it was a very serious festival. Now it's like a fun festival, right? No one takes it seriously now. Um, trick or treat means that when you go to a house, um, originally, you had to do a trick which is like a small song or perform something small. Maybe you could like do a handstand. Maybe you could show, some, show off something. Um, and then you were given a sweet. But nowadays, everybody just says trick or treat and they just get given sweets, right? There are no children actually now that do this anymore. They don't like sing a song or anything. But in the past, that's what you used to have to do. Okay. All right. Someone says... Thank you, teacher. <laughs> no worries. Someone says, what does pint mean? Pint, <laughs> pint is a unit of measurement. Um, pint is an amount of beer or liquid or milk. So how much uh, is a pint in grams, let's see, or a pint in milliliters. Hmm. So a pint is 560 milliliters. So it's like half. Yeah, it, it's a bit confusing. <laughs> um, but in the UK and in America, you know, we still use these very old ways of measuring. And sometimes it doesn't really make sense. Sometimes even even us, we don't know exactly how much. I know how much a pint is. It's this much. Yeah, maybe you can see my hands. Like, this is how much a pint is. But I can't tell you how much it is in milliliters. But it's what we use to measure beer. So if you get beer or cider or anything like this, you ask for one pint. You ask for one pint. And that is like one big glass. You can also have a half pint, which is like, a smaller glass. Okay. All right. How many people do you think there are in Ireland? I'm going to give you, okay, is it 5 million, 15 million, 
or 50 million people? Which one is the closest? Yeah, you're right. So there are not many people in Ireland, maybe four to five million, I can't remember exactly. It's a very small country. And what else can I tell you guys about Ireland? Well, oh, oh, here we go. This is important. Ireland is not part of the UK. Yeah, Ireland is not part of the UK. Ireland is a former British colony. Hmm. So Ireland is a former British colony. So actually many Irish people, actually millions of Irish people died because of the British. So there is a very complicated history with the UK and Ireland. But today let's go to Ireland and we're going to look at a very interesting story from there. Okay. Who can describe what you can see in this picture? What can you see in this picture? What's going on here? Danny, can you try? I will. I will. In the picture, I saw again the top of the beach. Top of the beach is flat and they lit up with beautiful lady. I think it's just like the queen. Mm. You mean this lady maybe is like a queen and they're the farmers? Yeah, it could definitely be like that. And you can see they have a dog. This dog is very famous in Ireland. If anyone sees this dog, we will always think of Ireland. Um, because it was very, very important um, throughout their history. They had these dogs like throughout the history of Ireland, like this one. Yeah, very, very big dogs, very strong, and they can run extremely fast. A wolf hound, it's called a wolf hound or a grey hound. A grey hound dog? Yeah. Tall and big. I think they run because long legs. Yeah, they run very, very quickly. So if you look up, if you search for um, some legends from Ireland, you can see in almost every picture, they have these big dogs. These big dogs are very famous. Okay. Right, let's go back. Okay, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so we can see exactly. Okay, I'm going to warn you guys that all of these Irish names are horrible to pronounce. <laughs> they are just very, very difficult and you will, you will not guess how some of these can be pronounced. So if you come across an Irish name, you can pause and I will tell you how to pronounce it because you will not guess. <laughs> Actually, maybe you guys know my middle name, on, so on Facebook, this is an Irish name. So my full name is this. And this one here is an Irish name. Can anyone guess how to pronounce it? A o i f e. Maybe? <laughs> No, it's okay. It's a, fun, it's a very fun game. I always used to play this game with my English classmates because they don't know how to pronounce it. Aoifi. And someone on Facebook, Winnie, says off. It's pronounced Aoife. Aoife. Yeah, Aoife. Yeah, Offer. Nice to see you, Earth. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you too? Yeah, we're very well. Thank you for joining us today. For the first time to have a um, this first time for me because I'm a new person. 
yes, I don't recognize you. Thank you for joining. And is it okay, Earth, if I call on you in the lesson, if I ask you to answer a question, is it okay? No? Oh. Yeah, it's okay. Well, very, okay, I have a thumbs up, excellent. Very good. Okay, let's go back to our story. Okay, so I will read the title, Tir Nanog, Tir Nanog, the story of Neve and Oishin, the story of Neve and Oishin. This is like a V. Okay. Who would like to read the first sentence? Oh, really? Duk says it's pronounced like Thai style, Neve, Neve, maybe. Okay, let's read it sentence by sentence, okay? So, Goy, can you read the first sentence, please? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I help you. Tinanog. Mm. Thank you. Tinanog. The the meaning of this is the land of eternal youth. So, what happens to you in these in this land? What happens to you in this country? Exactly. Nobody ever dies. But this is not heaven. Please don't misunderstand. This is not heaven. This is a place and everybody who lives here kind of has some magic, like they are spirits and they live forever because they live in this land. Okay. Okay. Earth, can you read the next sentence? Can you read the next sentence, please, Earth? Oh, we can't hear you. Yeah, there we go. Ada. Yeah, Oisin, thank you. Yes, so this is one of Ireland's most ancient tales. Tales is another word for story, right? It's one of the oldest tales in Ireland. And Eire is another name for Ireland. Many years ago, there lived a great and noble warrior named Oisin. What is a warrior? What does a warrior do? Anyone can answer. Fight. Yeah, fight. Yeah, he can fight. He can fight. And he's noble. What does that mean? Mm, that's fable. This is noble. No? Um, we can add this here. Let's add this ancient tales noble warrior okay noble means um they are very like they are a good person they never do bad things and they are very brave and they treat women you know children and elderly people very well like they don't they don't hurt women children or elderly people they're a good person and they're very brave and it also means they don't do things like gossip about other people. A noble person is kind of, they're someone that you can respect. Let's get rid of all of these. Okay. Okay, Danny, can you read the next sentence?
font max down here the list of the Fiona. Fiona and the protectors of the land. Mm, very good. So who is Oishin? Oishin is a warrior. Yeah, Oishin is a warrior. He's a great warrior. And he's the son of the legendary. So yesterday we learned about legend, right? So legendary means famous, so famous, he is like a legend. Finn McCool, and you can say Finn McCool, Finn McCool. The leader of the Fianna, the Fianna are like a group of men that go about the land and they protect the land. So if there are any problems, like they will help people, they will solve some issues, kind of like that. They are the protectors of the land. Mm. Duke says honor. Yeah, honor a noble. Um, if someone is honorable and noble, it's very similar. It's very similar. Honorable means they have um, like a code in their mind of things they will do and things they will never do. So if someone is honorable, it means they will never break a promise. They will never break their word. Um, anyone can be honorable. Someone who is noble, it suggests um, they are like a little bit better than most other people. <laughs> so they are not only honorable, but they are also maybe rich or they come from a good background or they are very well educated or they know they have a lot of knowledge, they are very clever. It kind of means all of these things. Okay. No, can you read this? Loch Lane. Mm, good. So where were they hunting? Where were they hunting? They were hunting by a lake. They were hunting by a lake. They were hunting on the shores of a lake. Okay. Nan. Oh, hang on. Is yeah, Nan, Nan is here. Very nice. Um okay. Goy, can you read this one, please? Mm -hmm. So that's what we can see in this picture up here. So these people, they are actually noble. It's just that, you know, maybe in Ireland, it's very cold. So even noble people with people with a lot of money, they need to like wear clothes like this because it's very cold. Okay. Okay. Isil Talk, are you here? I don't think so. So, Nan, can you read the next sentence, please? You can read until here. Oh, sorry. Hang on. Hi. Hello. I had not before. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, okay, okay. No worries. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Okay, she is brought close to the Fiona and this way, I am Neve. Neve of the Golden Air, and my father is the king of Tiananog. Mm. I have heard of the great valley of the ocean. Ashin, Ashin. The land of the Jews. 
Young. Thank you very much. Okay, so everyone, who is Neve? Who is Neve? Who is Neve? Yeah, she's a lady on the horse. And is she human? She's not human because she comes from this country, Tir Nanog, the land of the young, the land of the young, where if you live there, you never die. Everybody just listens to music and goes dancing and watches the sunrise and they never die. So she is not a normal human woman. Okay. And what does she want Oisin to do? What does she want Oisin to do? Yeah, the land of the young. <laughs> Good. Um, Goy says, I want to go to Tien and Oak. Well, Goy, I would like you to remember that you said that. And after we have finished reading the story, I am going to ask you again, would you like to go to the land of Tien and Oak? <laughs> mm, yes, it's never as... This is an Irish tale, and most Irish tales... They are a little bit scary in some way. They are not like fun stories for children. Okay. Okay, Nock, can you read this sentence, please? Oisin. Neves. Fion. Fion and Sarah. He jumped on the snow white horse with me. Very good. Do you guys think? Okay, let's take a pause here. <laughs> what do we think could happen in this story to Oishin? Let's brainstorm some ideas. What do you think could happen to Oisin in this story? What do you think, Danny? I, I forgot who is Oisin's girl. <laughs> is the man. Oisin is the man. But I, I think that the man will go with the lady. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I like this. I love this. Many weird things will happen to him. Maybe she will eat him. <laughs> yeah, maybe. You know, I don't know how it is in Thailand, but in these kind of stories, if there is a beautiful woman who says, hey, I love you, I love you, you should never trust her. Is it like that in Thai stories also? <laughs> Mm. So maybe she's like a spirit or something, right? Maybe she's dangerous. Oh, <laughs> so maybe she wants his money. <laughs> maybe she wants his money. A gold digger is a woman who wants... Not necessarily a criminal. Gold digger just means you want, like you marry someone because you want their money. So maybe you kill them, but maybe you don't, right? Maybe you just live with them and spend lots of money. Let me write that here. Gold digger. Exactly. Money is the most important thing. So a gold digger is someone who marries someone maybe much older and much richer because they want money. 
And usually we use this to talk about um, women, but of course, sometimes it does also happen for men. Okay, so maybe she will eat him. Maybe she wants his money. <laughs> You're so true. Maybe they could live happily together. <laughs> I don't think it will be a story, right? If they live happily together. <laughs> okay. So we have three, we have three predictions. Okay. When we get to the end of the story, I want you guys to come back and look at these predictions and see who is, who is closest, who is closest. Okay. Yeah, she's a princess. Okay. Okay. Earth, can you read this sentence? Earth. Hello. Yeah. I know that's not your real name, right? But it's the only name on Zoom, so. <laughs> Mm, very good. So what is special about this horse? What is special about this horse, according to this sentence? Yeah, he can run on the sea. He can run on the sea. And reaching the magical shores, right? So Tiananog is an island. Tiananog is an island. Okay, Goy, can you read the next sentence, please? The king and queen welcome Oshin and held a great feast in his honor. Good. So what did they do? They gave him a lot of food, right? They held a feast, so they gave him many, 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 many things to eat. So they... Yeah, they held a feast. They prepared lots of food for him and they did it in his honor. What does this mean? They held a feast in his honor. It means they held a feast for him or because of him. To honor him, right? To show respect to him, they gave him lots of food. So to show respect to him, for him. Okay, Danny, can you read this one, please? Sure. This was the magic plan where by the ocean hunted the bear's head and at times he sat on the throne and said, story? Mm, good, thank you. It was a magical land where by day Oishin hunted and feasted, and at night he sat and told ancient stories of Fion, which is his father, right? The Fiona, which are the people that he lives with, and Ireland. Mm. So actually, Oishin is not just nobody. Oishin is from this very famous family. And so maybe in Ireland, everybody else is telling stories about these people. So he's not some farmer boy, like he's from a very you know, nice family. So what did he do? He hunted and feasted. He hunted and feasted. What's hunting? He caught animals, right? He killed animals, like killed deer. And he feasted which means he ate and drank a lot. He ate and drank a lot. <laughs> do, do you guys think this sounds like a good place to live? <laughs> to hunt, 
yeah, to kill an animal for food and to feast means to drink and eat a huge amount and it's very delicious. Okay, so how does Oishin sound? Does it sound like he's enjoying his time here? So far, so good. Yeah, <laughs> so far, so good. And you can tell that again, in ancient Ireland, um, it was a country that where they always hunted. So they did not grow many things. Actually, they would hunt. They would find animals and kill them because it was very, this was a long time ago, a long time ago. Okay. Nock, can you read this sentence, please? Ayo. Yeah, so he lived there, very good. He lived there for 300 years, but soon the longing to return to the Emerald Isle began to overcome his love of the land of eternal youth. What does this mean? How does he feel about the land of eternal youth? Does he like it or not? He likes it, yeah? His love of the land of eternal youth. But eventually, he starts to long to return to the Emerald Isle. This is another name for Ireland. Isle means the same as island, so we can add another one. Yeah, Isle means the same as island. Isle. And the Emerald Isle the emerald isle means it's very green like an emerald why because really ireland a bit like thailand it has so much rain so it's a very very green place so it's called the emerald isle yeah because it's so green like if you if you if you see it on a plane, you just see green, 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 like this. Okay. The longing to return to the Emerald Isle. So to long, what does to long mean? It doesn't mean long and short, it's a different word. Does anybody know this word? If you say I long to see my home again. <laughs> kind of. To long means, you know, this emotion where you're like, oh, I really want, I really, really want something. So in this case, he really wants to see his home again. So it's kind of like um, you want something and you also feel very sad about it like at the same time, right? So maybe, for example, if you, um, like the story you told me about the man who went to war and then he came back and his wife is dead, right? You could say maybe like he longed to see his wife again. He longed, like he really, really wanted and he felt very sad. He longed to see his wife again. So Oishin longed to see the Emerald Isle. The longing, this is the, this is the noun, right? The longing to return to the Emerald Isle began to overcome. So it began to be more than his love for Tin and Oak. Okay, let's read this last, last one here and then we will take a break. Um, who would like to read this one? Danny. Name. Neve. 
Neve. Tiananoke. Dun dun dun. <laughs> so, if you set foot, right? If you put your foot down, if you put your foot down on the soil, so on the ground of Ireland, you will never be able to return to Tiananoke. So, this is like a little bit of why. You will find out. You will find out. <laughs> We can say this is like a little bit of a cliffhanger, right? This is this is kind of a cliffhanger. Okay, I will. Yeah, to be continued. <laughs> I mean, let's. Yeah, let's let's have a break, and after that, we will discuss what do we think will happen next to Oisin. Okay, let's have a ten-minute break, and I'll see you guys at seven minutes past eight.
Welcome back. Nock, I am so grateful for you for turning your camera on. <laughs> it's very nice to see at least one person. Thank you. I think I didn't know when I started working with Kalu, we are really part of when the call is going on, so all the kids have like virtual classes. But every time they talk to the teacher, all the kids turn on the camera. But I think it's that's that's kind of how i understand it as well um i mean i've been a student so i've been on both sides of this equation and right. during during the pandemic sometimes i thought if you make me look at you for an hour and i just have to be like Mm. Ah. Mm. like that's exhausting right but on the other side of things if you're the teacher and you are giving a lecture to 50 people and every single person has their camera off it, it's terrible <laughs> don't, don't worry goy no I, i'm not i'm not saying you guys like i know that you all have your own reasons i'm just saying that i'm pleased that knock i'm pleased that she can Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, and again, Goy, don't worry about it. I'm saying that I am thankful for Nock, not that I hate all of you. That's that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just saying I'm pleased there is one person. One person is okay. Okay, so we left our story at a cliffhanger. So what has just happened? Remind me. What has just happened in the story? Danny, are you here? Mm. What has just happened in our story? Like before we took the break, what happened? This town? <laughs> it's like a whole world. It's like a magic world. Yeah. So set foot in or set foot on literally means put your foot on, right? But we use it to mean to go somewhere. So for example, I could say, I have never set foot on French soil. And often we use it with soil, right? Soil is like the ground, the dirt. This means I have never been to France. Yeah, I've never been to France. I have never set foot on French soil. Mm. So if he sets foot on Irish soil, he can never come back to Tirnanog. Ah, oh, PM Sec is here. Yay. Hello, welcome. Welcome, welcome. How are you today? Do you have two voices? <laughs> oh, okay. Welcome back. Um, can someone tell PM Sec what story we are reading today and what has happened so far? In English. Okay. Takes who? Takes three of the men. No, just one man. One man. 
One, only one man, only one big, beautiful man, right? He is a very beautiful man, only him. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Danny. Thank you. Good effort. Would anybody else like to try again to explain the story? Okay, I'll, I'll try. Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, that was it. One up, one up for the top. Uh, mm. Who is Neve? Neve, the, 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 the queen. She's a princess, right? Yeah, she's a princess. A beautiful woman from what country? From China. Yeah. Nearly, good. Yeah, the land of eternal youth. The land of eternal. So, uh, Eve agreed to go with her. Uh, and he lived there about three hundred, three more than three hundred. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to his country of homeland, yeah. And uh, the princess him said to Hoisin that if you set foot Good. on the land, the island, the island is destroyed, so he won't be able to return to the land of eternal youth again. Mm. Yes, thank you very much. Exactly. So that is what has happened in this story. And the land of eternal youth, this is a magical land across the sea. And you can reach it by going on this magical white horse, right? This white horse ran across the sea to get there. And Oishin had a wonderful time in this country. So every day he was feasting, every day he was hunting. Um, he had a wonderful time, but finally after 300 years, he wanted to go home. What do you think will happen to him when he gets home? What could happen? Let's make some more predictions. Mm. Already passed for 300 years. Mm -hmm. mm. Very nice. What, who else has an idea? Almost uh, no one. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead, Danny. <laughs> okay. I think it's so similar of the boy. When he come back to the land, the Domo land, the time change, everything changed. The city mm, time ch will have changed. Everything will have changed. Maybe he cannot adjust himself to update and to the mm. present time. It's going to have a problem, problem because all his family gone, passed away, everything passed away, everyone passed away, and things changed. Something like that. Thank you. Oh, it's a good idea. 
Um, actually, this story is a story for children. So it's a little bit different to how my father used to tell me this story. My father always used to say that one of the magical things about Tin and Og is that the time moves differently to the normal world. So he, my father always used to say, and many people tell the story like this, actually, that when Oishin is in Tin and Og, he is only there for three days. He is only there for three days. And so he doesn't, he doesn't think anything. He's like, yeah, this place is pretty nice, but I don't actually know you, strange woman. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to marry you. Actually, I would like to go home. So in many versions of the story, he's just there for three days. And then only when he goes back, does he realize it was 300 years. So in many versions of the story, that is what happens. Let's see what happens in this version of the story. Okay. Okay, Nock, could you read the first sentence? Iceless? Mm. Okay, so actually, in this story, he thinks that three years have passed, not 300 years. He reached Ireland to find that everything had changed. It felt as though, right? It felt like, it felt like only three short years had passed instead of 300. Very nice. Okay, Goy, can you read the next sentence, please? Mm, very good. So he can't see his father, he can't see the Fianna, this band of people hunting in the hills. And what happens to the castle? What happens to the castle? I think it disappears or broken, destroyed. Yeah, it, it gets very old, right? This castle becomes very old. It becomes to crumble. So we often talk about um, like a crumbled castle. This means, because in the UK we have many castles, right? So I can show you guys some pictures of some castles. Like this. Right, maybe the king used to live here. Maybe some important people used to live here. And they're very old and they're very beautiful. This one is a crumbled castle that means that it's no longer new right it's crumbled down if a building crumbles down it means some stone falls off and maybe the roof falls off maybe nobody lives there anymore um, unlike in thailand it's very different like these places they don't have any tourism really so you can just walk through the woods, you can walk through the fields, and you can suddenly find a place like this. It's very interesting. Let's look at some. These, these are not crumbled, but this is a crumbled castle. Yeah, this is a crumbled castle. So his castle has gone from maybe looking, looking like this, right? Very new to maybe being all crumbled, very crumbled. Okay, let's continue. Okay, let's read these two sentences. Um, hmm. Who would like to read? Is Earth here or has Earth gone? Maybe Earth has gone. Yeah, put your hand up. You can put your hand up. Danny, okay. Danny please. But Danny, 
I'd like you to be careful because often when you read, you make up some words. <laughs> so I'd like you to be careful and read exactly what is here, okay? Very good. So he's going through this valley. He's trying to find home. Imagine how he feels. He feels very confused, very upset. And now he looks like this young, beautiful man on this beautiful white horse. So when he goes past, maybe everyone is staring at him. Because in these stories, often you can see if someone is from the land of youth because they look different. Their skin is very glowing. They look very beautiful. Um, they have no wrinkles or spots. So he's passing through the valley of the thrushes. Thrush is a type of bird. Yeah, it's not important here. It's just a name. And he sees these people trying to move a large stone. He wants to help. And actually, at first, what does he do? He tries to just lean down, so reach down to move the stone. So he is in a saddle, right, on a horse. This is a saddle of a horse. This is the saddle, this bit here, right? So he's sitting here and he tries to lean down with his hand to move this, the stone because he knows that if he puts his foot on the soil, he cannot go back to Tirnanog. So he has remembered this warning, right? He's, he's not forgetting. But actually the saddle breaks and so he falls down. The saddle strap broke and he fell to the ground. Okay, Goy, can you read the next sentence, please? Oh, thank you. So what happens to Oishin? Yeah, instantly, right? In like one second, he goes from this very, very young, beautiful man to this old, withered man. So let's look at some of the vocabulary here. Is there any words that you don't know? Withered? Yeah, the same one. <laughs> so if you're withered, okay, I'm going to stop sharing now because I want to show you guys. If you are withered, if you are young, maybe you will stand up like this, right? Straight. You're standing up straight. If you are withered, you are like, like this. <laughs> so your whole, you have lots of wrinkles and your body is like this. Okay, let me share my screen again. I think that was clear. You can see, right, in this picture, he is a withered old man. With withered, we usually use this word to talk about either old people or actually very old trees. We can also use this word to talk about an old tree, like a withered oak tree. Right, like this, this tree is also like this. It's like... It's not standing straight, it's withered. Okay, so let's write that here. Um, here we go. Withered, and what is galloped away? What is galloped away? The horse runs away. Yeah, it's the fastest way a horse has of running. Right, there are four ways that a horse can run and gallop is the fastest way. Good. Okay. What's about before, the men's very eyes? before the men's very eyes, it means they could see it happening. 
like it happened right in front of them. Usually we use this expression to talk about something very, very surprising that we can't believe that we really saw. So I could say, um, she got up and stood on the table to make a speech right before our very eyes, right? It means that we're very shocked to see that she got up on the table to make a speech. And often we use very here. Now very here, um, what could this mean? Like the very man himself or it was that very day that he met his future wife. This is not a normal use of the word very, right? Here, this very kind of means that exact day. Because it means like truth before our very eyes. It's like, do you not believe me? Our exact eyes, exactly our eyes. Okay, let's keep looking. Okay, let's keep reading. Um, who else is here? PM Sec, can you try and read this one? Okay, anyone else? Uh, Danny. Sure, sure. Legend said is that the man was divorced and immediately brought horses to St. Patrick. St. Patrick. <sighs> this is a, how to explain. St. Patrick is an Irish saint. So he is very famous. He is, um, that's why you guys have heard of St. Patrick's Day, right? He is an old man. He has done many magical things. He believes in God, so he's very famous. So in this story, this is like a Christian version of the story because in the original story, there is no St. Patrick because St. Patrick is a Christian. So it doesn't make sense that you have these magical creatures and you also have God and heaven, right? It's not the same... It's not the same belief. It's not the same legends. So in this story, I think this is maybe a Christian person has written this. Okay. What does it mean? Legend has it. Legend has it. Legend has it that. It just means legend says that. Yeah, legend says that. But we can also say, for example, rumor has it, which means we know the gossip and this is what the gossip says. Yeah, like rumor has it that she, I don't know, got into MIT. Rumor has it that she got into MIT. Or legend has it that he blah, 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 blah. Okay, not. can you read this one, please? St. Patrick tried to comfort Oisin, but when Oisin learned that the Fiona and his father were long soon dead. Mm -hmm. his, his heart filled with sadness and despair. Mm, okay, thank you. So St. Patrick who is also a very old guy, right? St. Patrick tries to comfort Oisin, um, but of course, eventually he has to learn that not only his father, but also his whole group of people, his whole community. And remember in his time, they were very, very famous, right? Everybody in Ireland knew these people. And now they are just gone and nobody knows even who they were. What, what's going on here? Long since dead. What does this mean? Maybe very long time. 
Yeah, long since, and then an adjective means the adjective for a very long time. So long since dead means they died a very long time ago. Or I could say the castle was long since crumbled. So the castle crumbled a very long time ago. Or I could say mm, the couple were, or the couple had long since married. It means they married a long time ago. Okay. All right, Goy, could you read this one, please? His father put on back a bill when they hunted, died, and listened to great stories together. Mm. Very good. So he spoke of the days of his life alongside the Fianna. So he spoke of what his life was like when he was with the Fianna, right? This group of people. And the many great deeds of his father, Fionn McCool. So great deeds. What is another way we could say this in English? Actually, I, I don't know uh, the of this word. Mm. So this word, again, great doesn't mean, wow, so fun, so very good. Right here, again, great means very important, very famous. Um, and deeds means actions. But usually we use this word deeds when we talk about a story or a legend. So we can say the great deeds of, and then like a hero, the great deeds of Hercules. So the great deeds of Odysseus, the great deeds of, and then a name of a very famous hero. It's like the amazing things that they did. Um, yeah, deed just means an action or an act. And it's related to the verb to do. Yeah, so it, a deed is literally just something that you do. Um, and usually we use this in the context like of a story um, or somebody very famous. So for example, you could say, we have all heard of the insp inspiring deeds of Mahatma Gandhi. Right, we have all heard of the inspiring deeds of Mahatma Gandhi. Um, yes, we, you can also say to commit a good deed. Um, and you can use this in a daily context. This means like um, a good act towards others. For example, if you help an old woman to cross the road, this is a good deed. And in Christianity, you know, people think that God will see, God will know, and he will reward you for doing good deeds. So we say, like, God will reward you for doing good deeds. Okay. They hunted, dined. Dined means... What's another word we can use to say this? Eat. Yeah. And what, what time? What time do you dine? Oh, yeah, exactly. Dine is dinner. And dine is a quite a formal word. So if you dine, it really suggests that this is like an amazing dinner. You know, this is, this is maybe five different dishes, maybe some red wine, maybe there are candles. You know, it's this kind of environment. It's not just a normal dinner. So to dine. Mm -hmm. I'm also want to ask you guys, it says here, Oisin spoke of, spoke of. So I want to ask you, what is the difference between talk about Talk of, speak of. Mm. 
Which one do you think sounds the most formal? Yeah, speak of is very formal to speak of. It also sounds, it sounds very poetic. It's a very nice word. So if you say, for example, we dined under the moonlight and spoke of many wonderful things. You know, it sounds very poetic. It sounds very romantic. It sounds like a story. Which one is the next most formal? Yeah, again. Yeah, well done. Talk of and talk about. This is just like a normal word, right? We just use this on a daily context. Again, if you have, if you ever have of instead of about, of tends to be slightly more formal. So this one is kind of in the middle, in the middle. Okay. Okay. Um, who is, who is here? Uh, who would like to read this sentence? We just have two left. Mm, thank you very much. Okay, Goy. Okay, never returning to Chinanok, but the wonderful stories of the ocean have lived on throughout the ages, and the legend of the land of Ethno use remains. Mm, very good. <laughs> thank you very much, everyone. We finished the story. What do you guys think? Beautiful story. Mm. Do you, is this like a happy story, a sad story? What is your feeling on finishing this story? Uh, in, in between. I mean, it's not that sad, but not happy at the end either. Mm hmm. We can maybe say it's a bittersweet story. Yeah, it's a bittersweet story. It has some aspects that make you happy, but at the same time, you also feel sad. <laughs> yeah, I think the ending is bittersweet. The ending is bittersweet. Okay, and Goy, you said that you would like to live in the land of eternal youth. Have you changed your opinion or do you still want to live there? What about if you can't come back to the real world? Oh, I will shake his head over <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Good answer. When, so when my father told me this story, like the story that he always told me um, about Tiananog, First of all, this is not the only story of Tiananog. There are maybe, there are hundreds of stories of this land. And in this story, it's a very nice place. But in other stories, as Goy says, it's a very strange place. I don't want to say it's an evil place, 
but the idea of what is good and evil does not exist in Tiernanok. So for them, the most important thing is beauty. So if something is beautiful, then it is good. So if you, I don't know, steal a princess and like take her to your house, if you think this is beautiful, then it's good. Do you see what I mean? So it's not an evil country, but it's very different. And in Tiernanog, they only care about pleasure. So they only care about doing things which make them happy. So for example, they just, they hunt all day, they sleep all night, they just listen to music, and there is no struggle in this world. And so in many of the stories, what happens is that at first, people who visit this land, they are like, this is the most amazing place in the world. It's, in some places, there is never night. It's just like, you know, this golden sunlight at maybe 7 p.m. or 6 p.m., like the golden afternoon sunlight. There is never even night. Um, but after a while, it's very difficult for humans to live in a place where everyone is happy all the time. What do you guys think about that description? Would you like to live there if it's like this? There's no right answer. <laughs> yeah, Nox says yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just asking your opinion. There's no right answer, it's a story. Mm. Mm. I think that's a good idea. In many stories, this world is so beautiful that if you go there, actually you will start to forget about your own home and your own family. So not in this story, but in many stories about this land, you go there and you eat their food and even one berry, you know, from the tree is so delicious that you begin to forget like your wife, your children, you forget why you came here and maybe you will just lie in the sun all day and be like, ah. Um, so I, when I was a child, I always used to find these stories very scary because the idea that something is too beautiful, it's so beautiful that it will ruin your life. I found that idea like a little bit scary. Oh, someone says, okay, Nan says, I have internet problems. No worries, just do what you can. Duk says, the same as our world, there are both good and bad people. Yes, but you know, in English, we say we have black and white morality. Like if something is good, it's like white. If something is bad, it's black. Then you have gray in the middle, right? When we talk about Tiernanog, and these Irish stories, we say that these people, they have blue and red morality. So they do have an idea of what is good and what is bad, but it's totally different from our idea of what is good and what is bad. Have you ever seen the school for good and evil? No, I haven't. What's it about? Have you seen it? Has anyone seen it? <laughs> oh, what's it about? It's uh, like magic, bad and good magic. I think, you know, I'm not sure, but I have seen it from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds interesting. Goy says, I've watched it. Goy, can you tell us about this movie? Uh, the, uh, um, angel 
Oh, like demons, angels and demons. Yes, yes. Um, she and her friend. The main character? The, yeah, the main character is a, is a girl. Uh, she looks like, she looks like she's a, like an actor, but, but she has to go to the evil school for her friend. Like a witch has to go to uh, angel school. Oh, interesting. And is it a film or is it a series? It's a film in the Netflix. Hmm. It sounds like a little bit like Wednesday. Did you guys see Wednesday? Yes, I did see Wednesday. Did you like it? Yes, Grace says yes. Mm. Mm, I thought it was okay, but I think it was, let me teach you guys a new word. Um, I think it was overhyped. I think it was overhyped. What is hype? Hype means like public excitement about something. So if there is a lot of hype about something, it means everyone is like super excited about it and says, oh, you must go and watch this movie. It's so good. You know, everyone is saying this, like, you know, the Barbie movie, there was a lot of hype about the Barbie movie because everybody was very excited. But I personally thought it was overhyped. That means the hype, and this is very casual. Yeah, this is like slang. This is like slang. This means that the hype so all this excitement actually was a bit too much. Like the show was okay, but I didn't think it was anything, you know, amazing. Um, so not as good as everybody said in the beginning. Mm. Okay. Can I ask you guys, do you have any stories about like another land in Thailand? Like either it's good or bad, but another land where maybe some spirits live or anything like this. Do you have any stories about this kind of thing? Yes, actually we have like a... Uh, in Thai we call Hulang Lak Land. I don't know. Can you not try, Goy? Your English is very good. Yeah. Okay, first Goy can try, and then afterwards... Hidden city. Uh, a hidden city. Hidden city. Oh. Hidden city. And what happens in the hidden city? Did you say not everyone can or everyone can? Not everyone, not everyone. Only few people can go there. And what happens in the city? Who lives in the city? Um, some, uh, in like many stories, uh, some people say that they are like, Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but it, it has like many stories. <laughs> but is it is it like a land of ghosts or is it real people or is it like demons and spirits or? It's, I've heard it's in the ghost story. Mm. Mm. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, thank Sorry. you. No, no, you, you, actually, I heard this story from my father, but it's a long time ago when I was 
talking about the eating series. So, like you guys say, it's many story in there. Like it end on you listen, mm. with, you know, who, who told you about that this uh, tiny eating series. There are many many stories from from uh, this city, eating series. Can you tell me one of them? Oh, he was like not teenagers uh, for many years. So he kind of go through the story about uh, Buddha, lost Buddha, about uh, eating city. So he said, uh, an only good guy, good person, uh, could go through this city. Mm. No bad guy. Like noble people. Mm. Yeah, and like, it's like, uh, when you go there, it's like, in the, in the area, it's beautiful places, and all kinds of, like, fairy, and, you know, good, good, good God, all the monk, and, you know, I, I kind of think a story about Lord Buddha from my <laughs> all kind of stuff, yeah, and when, um, you come out if you come came out from the city if you did bad stuff you, you could not go to that bed oh. anymore. Yeah. That, that that for my father. Oh maybe he just wanted you to do good deeds. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? Uh -huh. so many different from another style or not or mm. So kind of a little bit like this story, right? Like the, the story that my father told me is different in two or three ways to this story. Yeah. In, in the story that he used to tell us as children, um, the moment that Oishin... Mm, actually, it's very different, the story that he told. So Oishin goes over the, the waves on the horse and when he gets to his, when he gets to the beach, he feels such a strong love for his country, you know, and his land that he wants, he's like, I have to touch it again, at least touch it. And he knows that he can't, he knows that it's a bad idea. But he says, look, I'm not going to set foot on the land, but all I want to do is take one small stone, like a pebble from the beach. And actually he feels so sad when he goes to the beach that he doesn't even want to go to find his father. He just feels so sad that he can't go back, that he can't either have his wife or his father, like he has to choose between them, right? So he actually, he just wants to go straight back to Tiananok. He kind of changes his mind. So he goes on the beach and he's trotting over the beach on his beautiful white horse. And he sees this smooth, round, white pebble. And he thinks, this is the pebble that I want. It will remind me of my home and I will take it back to Tiananok. And as he is leaning down to pick up the pebble, the moment that his hand touches it, he crumbles into dust. He just becomes dust. He becomes nothing because he is so old, right? He doesn't become an old man. He goes straight to like <laughs> dying completely. So that's the story which I always heard. Which one do you guys prefer? Again, there's no right answer. <laughs> okay, let's just before the end, let's review some of these words. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you one of the word and I'd like you guys to give me um, a definition in English. For this word okay so to hold a feast to hold a feast what does this mean mm, it means to prepare lots of food for someone mm. 
So you can say, for example, when Oisin arrived in Tiananok, Neve's family prepared a feast. They held a feast in Oisin's honor. So for Oisin. In his honor. In his honor. Yeah, that means to show respect for him, right? Okay. What does it mean, longing? Longing. Goy, what do you think? What does longing mean? Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> does anyone know? Danny, do you know? I forgot the meaning. <laughs> it's okay. Longing. Exactly. Longing means not necessarily miss, but you want something. You don't want it like, yeah, I want it. You want it like, I want it. Like this. So maybe you can long for another person, right? In like these poems, maybe the woman will long for the man, like this. But you can also long for your homeland. You can long to see your grandmother again. You can long to hear good music. It just means you, you're... You want it, but you kind of feel sad at the same time. Okay. What about withered? Withered. Who knows? Who remembers what withered means? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Withered. Very good. Okay. What about right before our very eyes? Or before our very eyes? Yeah, and when do we usually use this word? In what kind of context? When something happened like um, uh, I can't remember that you you say that uh, before up. Yeah, so it means usually you feel surprised or shocked. Yeah, yeah. Like someone does something shocking and you're oh, right before our very eyes, like this. Okay, all right, let's end it here. Thank you very much. And thank you also to everyone on Facebook. Duk and Wirani are giving me some information about um, some Thai mythology and some Thai legends. Himapan or something. Yeah? Ah, oh. and... Napasa has asked the same as craving. So before I end, I will talk about this. So craving means you really strongly want something. And craving is often like your whole body is like, oh, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it, like this. Longing is much more of a sad um, or like gentle feeling. It, it's not a sudden feeling. Right, longing, maybe you feel it for like a year or five years. Maybe craving, it's like, oh, suddenly I craved chocolate. It means everything in my body suddenly wants chocolate, right? But longing, you long for something like, like this kind of feeling. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Let's finish there. Thank you so much, guys. Um, and thank you for telling me about the hidden city. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow.